Hi guys, happy Thursday, almost the weekend. Um, hmm, not sure what that is on my iPad. Uh, today's maths, we are going to be subtracting decimals with different decimal places. Think back to my advice yesterday, Draw, uh, set out your um, question, put the decimal points in first. They should be nice and neatly lined up and that will make sure all your digits are in the correct place. Take your time, make sure you watch the video. Good luck. Um, for English today, you're going to finish off your story that you set up yesterday. Here's my story mountain from yesterday. From my story mountain, I should be able to set up at least five paragraphs because I'm going to do an instruction, uh, build up, problem, resolution, and ending, everything going back to normal. So I'm looking to see five paragraphs. We've been revising using <coughs> semicolons, relative clauses. What else have we been revising? Uh... Oh, it would be good to, for you to try and use some of your year five, six spelling words in your story as well. Those three things are some things I'm looking for. So if you get one of uh, each of those things in, you're going to score a point for each. A point for using some semicolons, a point for relative clauses, and a point for using some of your spelling words, obviously spelled correctly. Um, I look forward to reading your stories. Once you've finished, can you please proofread them to check they make sense? Lots of children will be doing some pretty good writing, actually, but a couple of times I've, I've received piece of writing and we've got words missing or not quite the word, right word chosen, gr uh, like grammar issues, so make sure you proofread it. Go and read it to someone when you're finished. <coughs> What's the point in writing if no one gets to hear what you're saying? You could illustrate your work as well. Make sure you're using paragraphs. Look forward to reading them. Make sure I can read them. You might want to write them up in pen or type them up because it's a bit tricky to read your longer piece of writing. Um, so if you are finding it hard to get a good photo, you might want to um, type it up for me. Uh, today's spag, you've got a spag mat. It's the autumn spag mat number two. Uh, should not take you very long at all because you've got quite a lot of English to do today. And then for topic, this is a really interesting one because this happens quite a lot in Fulham. This is thinking about how uh, can people intentionally damage an area or do people unintentionally damage an area? So I want you to imagine that either a new park or a housing development or a restaurant or something is being built on a park near where you live. Imagine that Norman Croft Park, or Norman Park, sorry, was being knocked down to build a load of flats. Why is that, why would that be a good thing, first of all? Why would we, why would it be a good thing for Norman Croft, Norman Park to be turned into um, a housing development? Why is that a good thing? But then also, why would that be a bad thing? Why would we not want that to happen? Because things like that do often happen. We've had lots of housing developments near school. And it's got pros, good things, and cons. Nothing is perfect. <coughs> I want you to think about how it might be positive for the environment and how it might be negative for the environment. You might want to show this for me in a table, list of pros and list of cons. I want you to think about the wildlife in the area, the air that we breathe in around the area, how it might have an impact. Um, the noise and light pollution that it might cause and jobs in the area, how it might impact on people, uh, people's employment. Is it a good thing that we have these things going on for humans? I look forward to reading those guys. Um, it's Thursday so I'm not going to be on the dojo as much today um, but we've got Jamie extra to help us out um, but I will make sure I check and have a look at all of your lovely, lovely stories. Have a great day and I'll see you tomorrow.